for your patience and for staying here till the very end today. I understand it's a very long day. I'm sure you're aware of the security incidents that have happened this week, every and uh, others that have happened this week. I'd like to talk a little bit about this because I think we need to have more criteria and be more rigorous when we treat incidents. I'll speak a bit more about this as we go on. I'm going to go a little bit quickly so that we can all get out and have a drink together. So this is what we're going to have a look at. So who am I? I'm in the finger team in PATOWC. It's something that I love. I've been it for more than 26 years. Those of you that are starting out at the beginning, it may be difficult, but don't give up because uh, sometimes uh, there's a lot of things that you can gain in the future, but you have to go through a lot to get there. But don't give up. There is a lot that you can do. It's one of the best areas of work that we can possibly have. And you have a a bit of strategy and a little bit of technology because cybersecurity deals with both areas. This is not me. This is a talk that somebody else gave in another event, David Barroso. I'm better looking than that. So what is the issue in the sector? There are incidents every week, every day something happens. There are serious incidents very often. But I get worried about this because I uh, get up at 8 in the morning and uh, recently there was already people talking about uh, an incident and uh, hysterical and saying that they were going to cut their computers off and turn them off and the press was already involved and in getting people very excited about this event. But we'll end up seeing that um, how all this noise is uh, filtered and how it reached the chaos in the sector. And I realized that there were some supposed experts. You will see how ATP groups work and these were attacking the, the different groups and uh, Spain as a whole was just going down and this is very dangerous in terms of citizens and in terms of businesses. We're talking about an apocalypsis just for one given event. So we're saying, oh yeah, bad things are coming, bad things are coming, bad things are coming, but then people get tired of listening to you. So when bad things do happen, people don't want to listen to you. So we need to be rigorous and serious about our work and if we don't do things in a serious way, then something negative will happen. Suppose uh, security experts that come out talking about things, we'll have to see um, if they are serious or not. We'll see if Emotec was a serious incident or not. So in incident res response and forensics, you don't take a decision and um, take the evidence to make it fit what you wanted. You observe the evidence and the evidence tells you the result and based on a sustainable hypothesis. This is a very interesting pyramid because at the bottom you can see the preventive side and you trying to construct what you should be monitoring to have uh, quality evidence and I can tell you that most people fail in the base of the pyramid everybody forgets to do the basics we're talking about uh, machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence but the basic things we don't do them we spend 500,000 euros a year on on technology, but that's nothing if we don't do the basics of the pyramid. At the top, when things are already happening, when we uh, detect and track, when nobody has done their traceability well, then things go crazy. crazy. And rather than having strong evidence, well-documented evidence, then people um, invent things that uh, fit in with their discourse about the incident. So if you haven't do the base work, any response that you do to an incident will be 
just like what I was saying. So um, this is a rather dangerous area. So this diagram is very important, and preparation is more important than you would think. If you don't prepare, then you won't be able to get to detection and license containment. And I'd like to talk about the middle bit, which is the detection bit. If you haven't done what you need to be able to detect, you'll never get to the containment part because you don't know what you have to detect. And if the actor that is attacking you is nothing like what they're telling you that is going on, then you're trying to use some techniques that have nothing to do with the attacker, which is the case of Everest. Half of Spain was protecting their organizations against something was that was nothing like was the reality. So let's talk about some numbers. On the right-hand side is an estimation of the cybersecurity spending of the coming years. And on the left, it's the cost of the data breaches. So if you do a quick comparison, so you'll see that not having security is increasingly expensive and the cost of investing in security is increasingly high. So. What does this mean? That organizations and people working in the sector need to understand that you have to invest because this is the trend. You say, I don't have to run faster than the fastest, I just have to run faster than you because otherwise you won't catch up with me. So what I mean is this, if there's no investment, then people will be far away and the bad guys will eat all the people that are around them. So, don't get left behind. Let's have a look at this uh, investment ratio and the impact that this has. This is an economic forum diagram. This is one of the best diagrams to describe cybersecurity. These are the threats to the human race, not to a company, not to a country, not to people, to the human race as a whole. At the top, we're talking about a lack of water, huge migrations, serious political issues, terrorism, and so on. Look at where everything to do with cybersecurity is. Those dots in 2017 was the relationship of the threats for humanity. Look at where they are nowadays. Look at where they are now in 2019. And as you can see, they're always going further and further up the diagram. And specifically related to cybersecurity, those threats affect humanity as a whole. These are not trivial issues, but we make them trivial when we don't take our work seriously. Let me explain myself. The Everest incident. So information start go, started going around about the vulnerability that had been exploiting the previous weeks and what had happened in Everest, that somebody was exploiting the blue teeth and nobody had seen malware, nobody had seen any evidences, nobody had a log, nobody had seen anything. It was fluky for definite. And these specialist teams, and they should be experts talking about this issue. It was nothing to do with blue tip. We'll see this in a minute. So Everest and Cadena Ser were connected, and there were other companies involved. That is a lie. There were no other companies involved. Cadena said what it had was an Emotech and it uh, continued working. And so Cadena said was one side and Everest was something that was completely different. But the information was coming in and going on and on and on. The, the press and the so-called experts. And the same thing happened in the confidential. In the newspaper, I was telling them, don't print this, don't print this. You're playing with the image of prestige that you may or may not have. So, But they thought it was a good headline, so you know what happens. So this was the apocalypse. The world was coming to an end. And if you see, it was very interesting. This It says that it was asking for bitcoins. That was not true. It's a lie. 
The same in the Mundo, another newspaper. The article down at the bottom, if you see, says that the DSN, the National Security Team, said that the, it was the, the end of everything, and this was a huge problem. I went to the web page, and I had a look, and I thought, oh, dear. But you see the National Security page, and there was no date on there. So the journalist saw something, saw there was a, an official communication, thought it was current, and put it in the newspaper. I called the people in the National Security Department. There was no way of getting in touch with them because they were receiving calls from everywhere. And I told them to take that piece of news off their web page. But the damage had already been done because it was already circulating and so on. So I contacted IBEX 35 and told them it's not true. It's not true. That's not the real news. Please don't uh, take, in, take any note of this. Ignore it. And as you can see, it says a massive attack to the entire planet. So then this was the point when I stopped arguing with the experts, and I thought, well, yeah, there's nothing I can do. This is the apocalypse. So this is the screen that was going round, and this was a serious issue. Everybody was receiving these screenshots, and this was of no use to anybody. People who tend to share sensitive information is not helping anybody. They just want to be there in the press show, saying that they're sharing information. But if you have a look at the information of the email accounts, I can't see if anybody's contacting them from my company. So this information was actually useless. So these experts were insisting on the MO tech. This is the, the kind of uh, infection for iEncrypt, and this has nothing to do with the Reox group, which is the ransomware, which is generally distributed when you have a ransomware coming in behind the Emotech. So in a couple of minutes, people are aware of this screenshot. So I couldn't understand that people were saying that they knew um, that they'd seen thing and it's Emotech and so on, so on, so on. So all of a sudden we had this screen and there were several of us in the sector saying that we weren't sharing a sample and I was on the side of, uh, and I got in touch with Everest and I said, share something with us and we'll help you. It's not about self-protection. This is about not sharing the information and the next person will be me or IBEX 35 or to many other companies. Nobody shared the sample that we were asking for from nine in the morning and everybody was going crazy. I called even personal friends and said, bring me your, your laptop, um, but it, they couldn't do that. I couldn't get them in trouble like that. And I spoke to Everest and I said, please think about what you're doing. This is bad for everybody. So the report was filtered in virus total, and everybody thought that this was absolutely correct, but in fact it had a number of errors. And it was uh, said that it was coming through Emotech, but in fact this was false, saying that there was an install of an update of a browser, but uh, this is not uh, related to the areas, then to the people related to this payment. I know a little bit how this works works, you only have to go to MITRE to the attack web and see, oh yeah, that's uh, that's it. But no, no, no. But they wanted to continue with the MOTEC. So there was a website that had been compromised. There was a watering hole. Do you know what that is? That's where animals go to have a drink and other stronger animals come and uh, attack them there. So this is when you're going somewhere to somewhere that's where it's already compromised waiting for an attacker to come to you. So this lack of knowledge and this knowledge is um, very typical of these groups behind this attack. So on point five you can see that it's talking about bit payment, but it's still talking about Enotet distribution, it doesn't make sense. It's usually phishing and you install a dropper and it does what it needs to do.
In this particular case, you've already installed the false update for the browser, and these are two different sectors, two different issues. So this is now the 5th of November, when everybody knows what had really happened. We all knew what had happened with the payment and, uh, and so on. No, no. But here it continues to contain uh, false information, talking about bit payment on the bottom, because uh, we're getting information from all parts. So bit payment on point five. So it's inconsistent. And the, the ransom from Ryuk uh, is a competitor, competitor of the Emotec, so they're not going to do a joint attack. So this really gets me angry, and it came to a point that I was actually bored by it. I said to my clients, don't pay any attention to this, it's false, concentrate on what I told you to do, the, the prevention techniques and uh, don't pay any attention to the, the lies. The only thing that we can do in this situation is to collaborate. And when the first person finds out, you have to communicate to the rest of the industry. It's important to share the information. No, but then people like to say, oh, no, I did the analysis of this and be the star of the day. <laughs> <coughs> right, so this is what was published on Everest's blog about the incident. Nothing at all. This is just about whether you are going to invest or not in cybersecurity. To date, there has not been clear information from Everest, and this is not collaborating. And my premise is absolutely radical. I only collaborate with those who collaborate. And as far as I can reach, those who are within that scope will be working with whoever is collaborating. This is just uh, so that you see the actual evidence now. This uh, was published by McAfee halfway through the morning, and this was so clear. What did McAfee do? They went on MITRE, they mapped the techniques, and they said, well, clearly, this is bit payment. And that is what you have to do, just check the evidence you have and see what would actually support a theory. And th this is very important because this was really well done. It identifies everything that is related to this actor. And Blue Live um, published a report which was very good and very detailed, and thankfully it had to do with the only well done analysis of the only sample that we had circulating around. And here they say, no, this is nothing to do, this is bit payment, the group behind it is the same group that um, works with Dredex, and techniques are very clear, and just forget about Emotet. And um, I don't know if I can point it here, but as you can see, according to IOCs, the entry point was a fake it update, which is a typical Dridix uh, technique to install the bug. So I thought, well, thankfully someone is bringing some common sense into the picture. And really, this is sharing information, because here you can see the email addresses and you can deploy all your email filters so that they cut them and that they check whether they have got in contact with them. Because uh, sharing censored information is not sharing it. Yeah, cool. You're, sh you're sending something, but you're not sending me anything, really. So, uh, if we keep reading what Blue Live uh, reported on, we see it very clear. But does no one in this country ever follow procedures? This really makes me scared, because we're talking about an infection that has affected an organization and it's caused a problem for everyone. But now imagine if this was really an APT, because we keep talking about Tao Yankee, about Russians, about the British, about the Brazilians, the Koreans, Lazarus Group. There are many, many actors who have great interests in this. Just imagine this had happened for real, that it was one of those plus, plus, plus issue APT. And we keep talking about Dridix, Emotet, and I am sending you censored uh, snapshots. This is not how 
you should work. This is very irresponsible because this only leads uh, to me giving you uh, bad information in exchange for bad information because this is about who goes on the press fairs. Well, I will be the first one. I will just say nonsense and be the first one going to the press. If this is really what we're doing to protect our country and our industry, well, that's what we're going to get. So be very careful with this attitude because this brings uh, craziness. That's what happened that Monday. The press were saying that this was apocalypse and everyone went crazy. I imagine how many calls you got at Infibe. I can imagine what's going on, what's going on. And we could have saved us all a lot of time and have had breakfast quietly and one less consent. Now, these are the four apocalypse um, riders, ignorance, people who come out saying whatever they want to say, rush, and uh, I was actually, by the way, working in Morocco for a while, and Moroccans say that rush kills, and rush does kill. Laziness for not verifying IOCs and analyzing the sample um, for a while. No, I just go on virus total, and I, virus total and I just check what they have written there. And then fame, of course, because everyone wants to be the superstar and say, oh, I discovered this. So yeah, let's, let's keep going. Let's just keep being in denial. Let's just not give everybody uh, proper information. I don't know if you've seen, but at Prosigo it happened. It's exactly the same thing this week. There were headlines everywhere. The Prosigo incident is exactly the same as what happened at Everest. But no, Prosigo was imitated and Everest was bit famous. How are we going on about again the same situation? This is never ending. So this is ridiculous. This is preposterous. We really have to take this seriously. We have to start managing incidents accurately and properly because this otherwise leads to very dangerous situations. If I'm not sharing information that could help the IVEX 35, the military in FIBE, and I just keep it for myself, then what? Great. I'm not collaborating at all. <coughs> So we have to be very rigorous and we have to control the press because the press are only after headlines. Their job is not uh, to inform people but to make money. And for that, they need uh, attractive headlines. And in order to get attractive headlines, they have only to say half the truth. Um, Everys should get a little slap for not sharing a sample, whereas Prosigal, for example, did uh, a completely different thing. First of all, they got in touch with Enfibe and other coordination groups. They started publishing news. They started sending tweets. So think what is the right path towards collaboration and what is the right thing to do. Now, this is very important. I don't know if you've ever heard uh, the Be Water, my friend. It's not Bruce Lee, it's Miyamoto Musashi. He was a Japanese samurai who invented the double uh, katana um, and, and the two spades. And he wrote a book called The Five Rings, and that's what they explain what the Tao, the spirit of being a samurai, being a warrior. And he says that water takes the shape of things. And you, you may hit water, but it doesn't matter because water adapts to its environment. And this is all very good if you know what's attacking you. But if you don't know what's attacking you, then there's not much you can do. And if you want to achieve resilience, which is or cyber resilience, which is what we're all talking about right now, uh, then we need to have the right contacts and the right uh, collaborators and the right information to do it, because otherwise it is impossible to be resilient. If you get fake information and you try to protect yourself from things which are not really attacking you, you have an issue because someone else is attacking you on the other side. You're listening to the press and not to the professionals. You have to be very careful. So thank you very, very much. I don't know if you have any questions. When it comes to new regulations with GDPR, do companies not have the obligation to communicate in Thebe about, uh, to tell in Thebe about these situations? Yeah, yeah, not only with that regulation, but with many other current regulations. 
He, you know that I am very blunt. I don't like going just halfway. And organizations usually have two strategies. One is compliance, and the other one is I comply and I lie. I don't know if that has answered your question. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Yeah, there was another question. Oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't see that. Hello. <laughs> Why do you think a company does not share information? I completely agree to what, with what you have said, because sharing information uh, prevents you from being the next one being targeted, but also from a company point of view, you might also say, well, I've got this done to me. Why couldn't the others get the same thing? Why do you think companies do not share all the information when they do know that it's being shared in the background? Well, first of all, this is an obsolete mentality. You have a crisis. If you're managing uh, properly, uh, managing it properly, then the director of communications can either uh, be ignorant and just say, I'm not sharing information because I'm not sharing information, uh, which is absurd because everything will get um, filtered in the end and leaked uh, because people were calling me with this incident with the Distrito T incident saying just turn off your computers and go home. So first of all, it's an obsolete mentality, diehard mentality and just saying I'm not sharing information. And also because we're not doing our homework when it comes to cybersecurity. You talk about bits and bytes and all they hear is noise. But when you talk about strategy, then they would start thinking with you and not against you. And that is exactly the issue, isn't it? Uh, strategy. Is it not more beneficial from a stra strategic point of view uh, and more beneficial also uh, from a financial point of view? share that information that keep it to themselves. I agree, I share your view, but just uh, put yourself in the shoes of a company such as Everies, which is a consultancy that uh, is focused on cyber security. If you don't solve that yourself, it might look like you're not as good at cyber security because you need help from others, which is silly because we might be very good firemen and we might get a fire at home, right? So I. I do understand that point of view, but I do think that it is wrong and it is harmful. And we have to keep working so people uh, leave that sort of uh, thinking. And I think uh, Enthebe should go and just uh, talk very clearly to those companies. So they have to be aligned and not alienated with uh, business and people have to be told of when they make this sort of decisions. I don't mind being the one who tells them off, but someone has to. But be careful you don't get told off yourself. Any, any other questions? Well, thanks a lot then.